now at 11. Oregon leaps forward in vaccine eligibility Monday. How local teens are helping find appointments as an influx of people get the green light to snag their COVID shot. Plus, Artists celebrate the voice of a generation, the collaboration fundraising, a message behind a mural of poet and activist Amanda Gorman, and later shining the light on a migration mess, how you can help birds making their way through the Pacific Northwest with a flip of a switch. This is KGW News at 11. Starting tomorrow, every person 16 and older in Oregon will be eligible for the COVID vaccine. Thanks for staying up with us. I'm Brittany Falkers. It's the next step in the vaccine rollout after the state crossed a major milestone. At least 1.5 million people have been vaccinated with one or more shot of the medicine. And we may start seeing those numbers increase rapidly as younger people eager to get inoculated have their opportunity. Governor Kate Brown is encouraging anyone who wants to get the shot to make a plan and help others get signed up as well. The move comes as cases continue to rise, though. Oregon reported at least 628 new cases and zero new deaths today. Now, there's a lot of information out there when it comes to the vaccine, and we have resources for you at KGW.com, where you can also find different ways to sign up to get your shot. And as the vaccination effort ramps up here in Oregon and Washington, the U.S. hit a new benchmark this weekend. According to new data from the CDC, more than half of U.S. adults have gotten at least one dose. That's around 130 million people. The data released also shows 84 million people are fully vaccinated. And while many of you may have your first chance to sign up for a vaccine tomorrow, a group of high school students is offering help to get connected to appointments. The new tool just launched. Galen Etlin checks in with the teens to find out how it works. These high school students are part of the team for Portland Student Pandemic Response. Which is a nonprofit that was built to give students a place to collaborate virtually in helping Portland and Oregon through the pandemic. The group has a new text line for Oregonians to find a COVID-19 vaccine appointment. And it checks it to the second, so you're always getting the most relevant data. The idea is easy access through your phone, getting as many people access to vaccine appointments as possible as everyone over 16 becomes eligible April 19th. So what are the steps? The first is texting the word vaccine to 850-367-7033. The second is checking your eligibility with the Oregon Health Authority link that will pop up after you text. And the third is entering a zip code, either your own or one near you, and a list of vaccine appointments will pop up. I would imagine this is also sort of a technical feat to put all of this together. When it came to that aspect of it, how did you make this technology work? So it's based off of a national open source coding program and adapted into text line format by Portland Student Pandemic Response members, which is super cool. Students from multiple schools in the Portland area have worked since last year to help people through the pandemic, from donating PPE to helping people find food assistance. High school students have a lot of power in what they can do. And when they are able to direct their energy into making an impact, it will happen and it'll happen at a pretty good scale. And for these soon to graduate seniors, they're working to pass the torch. Are you or a loved one looking to get vaccinated? These online training videos are for other students to become ambassadors, helping friends, family and community members get vaccination appointments. Students, um, once they finish this, will take a quiz. And if they pass, we will provide them with a little PSBR official um, vaccine ambassador certificate. Why would you say that this is a rewarding thing to be a part of during this moment in history? It allows you to have a way to help in seeing the light at the end of this tunnel. You, you feel like you're contributing to the end of this long, in many cases, painful experience. The text line costs a little money, so students are crowdsourcing it online and taking with them an important lesson. That individuals do have power to make a difference. Galen Etlin, KGW News. We've been following a developing story since Friday morning after a Portland police officer shot and killed a person at Lentz Park. New today, we talked to a witness who saw the whole thing play out. Tim Gordon explains what he saw before and after pressing record. 
People have placed flowers at a memorial for Robert Douglas Delgado. Delgado is the man police came to check out in Lentz Park. It ended with both less lethal and lethal force used against the 46-year-old Portlander. Delgado died of a single gunshot. It's really tough because it happened all right next to me, right next to me, right next to my truck. David Hernandez videotaped the deadly ordeal. We're showing you just a little of the 11-minute clip to see his perspective. A few hours before the police confrontation, Hernandez says he and his partner were at the park and noticed a tent in the grass nearby. Then Delgado, who they did not know, came from the tent to visit. But he bumped a couple of cigarettes from us, um, and we kicked it and shared a few moments of our life just talking. He seemed like a really cool guy. Um, he wasn't on drugs. He didn't smell like alcohol. At that time, Hernandez um, said he noticed Delgado had a gun, yeah, but that it wasn't loaded. Went, went Sources have to told the Oregonian field. that police recovered a replica with an orange tip on it. The investigation is far from over. But family members described Delgado to the Oregonian as a sweet man who lived a troubled life, suffering from mental illness and substance abuse. Mental health advocates say more help is needed for those in crisis. As you have people who have both the mental health background uh, and the connections to the community, the connections to resources that you need to really contact people and figure out what it is they need to get them out of that place of crisis. Um, that's another thing that we'd really like to see funded. And then I really think housing is also an incredibly crucial component of it, too. Delgado was houseless, and so is David Hernandez, who has shared his video with police and expects to be called in as a witness. What I'm going to go there to do is tell them the exact truth. That's all I can do. The truth, as he saw it, of something he'll never forget. I spent a few moments of my life with this person to get to know him a little bit and interact and he's gone. It's tough. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Some firefighters in Clark County got a little more than they were expecting when responding to a call today. Check out these photos from fire officials and look closely. That's an African serval. Crews were called to the home for a fire and were able to get the flames under control in about 25 minutes, thanks to some help from the Vancouver Fire Department. And that's when they saw the large exotic cat. One firefighter was hurt when the serval bit him. Since the fire was out, they closed up the house and waited for animal control to get there. The cat was not injured. Officials say it was just, quote, a little freaked out. I'm sure the firefighters were as well.